Hi, this is Jesse Liberty for Telerik. Today we're going to take a look at getting started with the Rad Time Bar. Rad Time Bar is a lightweight container to hold other data displaying controls such as Rad Sparkline. We'll take a look at using Rad Time Bar. Let's begin by opening up Visual Studio and creating a new project. Let's name that project Rad Time Bar Getting Started. We'll say that it's a Silverlight 5 application. And when the Telerik configuration widget comes up, we'll choose Data Visualization. That will include Data Visualization and all its dependent references, as you can see in the right-hand side in the Solution Explorer. Now we need to do this a little bit inside out. We want our RAD time bar to contain RAD Sparkline, and RAD Sparkline is going to need some data. So the first thing that we need to do is to go to our project and add a new class, and we're going to call that class Test Data. Test Data is just going to have a couple public properties. The first will be of type date, time, and called date. The second will be an integer called value. With that in place, we are ready to go and generate some data. So we're going to go to mainpage.xaml.cs. And the first thing that we want to do is to create a private member variable, which will be a list of the objects that we care about. That is a list of test data objects. And let's call that underbar linear data. And we'll initialize that in the constructor. And then we need a public property, also of list test data, and this will be uppercase linear data with no underbar. So the corresponding public property. And the getter will, as you would expect, return the private member variable value. And the setter will simply set the value of the private member variable to whatever is passed in whatever is assigned. With that, we're ready to begin to add objects to our list. Let's create a little helper method to do so. We'll call it initialize data and let Visual Studio create a stub for us. Inside of initialize data, we're going to first declare a random number generator as we'll use that for the integer value. And then we're going to create a for loop so that we can iterate through that for loop and create new data. We'll say linear data add, and what we're adding to that is a new test data object, and then we can initialize the two values of test data. First, the date, which we will add as many days as our counter is up to, and then we will also initialize the value to the value of whatever is generated by our random number generator, a number between negative 100 and positive 100. We also want to remember to set the data context to this, that is to this very object, because it's on this object that we have the public property we'll be binding to. Let's go back to the XAML and create an instance of our rad time bar. So we're going to use the Telerik namespace that was provided automatically and say rad time bar. And then there are a number of dates that we need to put in. First of all, where do we want to start? What's the earliest date that we want? That's period start. And what's the latest date that we want to show data for? And that is going to be period end. The data will be spread out over those two. Next, when it's initially shown, what should be visible? We're going to have a visible period start and end, and that will be shown when we first open the control and show it in the browser. And finally, we can have a selection period for specific dates that are going to be highlighted. Within the RAD time bar, we also need to declare what units of time we're interested in. To do that, we're going to use the rad time bars intervals property. Within the intervals property, we're going to declare the intervals we're interested in. You can see it's an enumerated constant, and we're going to use the year value, the month value, the week value, and finally the day interval value. We need to close off our time bar. That's why the grid 
is showing a squiggly line, so let's just put our closing tag. Before we end rad time bar and within rad time bar, we want to declare our sparkline object. So let's create an instance of rad sparkline right here within the time bar declaration itself. We're going to tell it its item source, and that is going to be by binding to that list of data objects that we created in code. So we're going to bind to linear data. Now we need to tell it its X value path and its Y value path. And we're going to set for the X value path date. No surprise there. And for the Y value path, the value that we put into our data. We're now ready to take that data and compile and build and show our data inside the control and you can see it starts mid-November and ends mid-March. That was our visibility period. The selection period is from January through February and you can see that selection period marked off. You can also scroll back to January 2011 and end at December of 2013 and that is because that was our entire period of coverage. But we're not limited. We can decrease or increase our selection area we can also decrease or increase the visibility and that will give us a different perspective on the data dynamically as we're using the control and of course we can take the control and scroll it back and forth through time giving us a great deal of control over what is displayed i hope you've seen how easy it is to get started with rad time bar for telerik this is jesse liberty thank you very much and i look forward to talking with you again soon